Hey guys, it's Bart Johnson here, NAB 2016. I'm here with Paul in the Canon booth, and we are taking a look at a brand new cine lens that you guys just put out. It's the 18 to 80 T4.4, correct? That is correct. All right, so tell me a little bit about this lens, what you guys got going on, and, and who you're thinking this kind of lens is for. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the impetus behind this lens was that Canon kind of looked at the market and saw that there was this real void there mm -hmm. for, especially in the uh, Cine Servo uh, you know, lens line. Yeah. The, on the top, and you have all these Cine Servos that are in the $30,000 or $20,000. Yeah, they're very own, expensive. Own 17 to 120, you yeah. know, $29,000 lens. Um, but going down from there, you really have nothing. And then you hit um, a market that's pretty much the still glass, using the still glass on video cameras. Yeah. Uh, I think so Canon saw that there was this real desire of people who were in in the still glass market, using the still glass, but they want to graduate up to more to a, a servo style soon. Yeah. Uh, so they saw this and they said, "Okay, let's take kind of the best of both worlds. Let's create this hybrid uh, lens and call it the compact servo." And so here we have the 18 to 80 compact servo. So it is a months. powered servo cine zoom. Exactly. So it's, so, it's got pretty much every <laughs> delineation you would want in, in a lens there. Yeah, absolutely. And it's IS as well, isn't it? That is true, yeah, IS. I thought I had noticed that before. So, <laughs> and this is really where we see kind of like the uh, the combination of both the, the L-series uh, history and with the cinema uh, level lenses. Mm -hmm. We have uh, the IS, uh, it's EF only. Okay. Um, we have USM motors for autofocus, on, especially on our cameras, on the C300 Mark II and the C100 Mark II, full di uh, dual pixel autofocus for mm -hmm. the lens, uh, which is really unique. Um, so T, like you mentioned before, T4.4, but that's all the way through. All the way through, so, all the way from 18 to 80 That's millimeters. right, so no, no ramping on this guy. Yeah. Now here's the big thing, is that it's fully parfocal. So legitimately parfocal, which is something that people in the L series line have never had before. Yeah. And it's but on the higher end, it's an absolute must. We yeah. have to have parfocal in our you, cinema. You zoom can't lenses. be zooming in and having your, your focus shift yeah. as you go to different uh, focal lengths. Exactly. Exactly. So so. It's, so if you lock it in, if you zoomed in on, mm -hmm. on a subject, set your focus yeah. and then zoom out or zoom in even further or anything like that, your focus is still oh, where it's supposed absolutely. to be. Absolutely. And it's got to be. perfect. Exactly. It's gotta yeah, be. especially so. when, you're, when you're talking cine. You need mm -hmm. that that for professional yeah. work. Yeah. On top of that, the lens the lens elements themselves are coated a little differently. They're coated more okay. like our cinema glass. So tonality wise and characteristic wise, it fits really nicely in with our cinema lines. In fact, you can go. It's a great complement for our cine primes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the the cine primes I, I I know very well. I've worked with. Uh, the color and the look of them is fantastic. Yeah. But the ability to have something, like I said, the size of this lens is amazing because it's so small. Yeah. Um, and But that range of zoom, and even just to have a zoom is fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. It being servo is perfect for the ENG kind of guys. Yes. If you're doing event gather or, or you know news gathering yeah. and, and uh, events and stuff, that's fantastic for that. You've got the IS for the documentary guys who <laughs> yeah. might be slopping it on their shoulder and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. And it's just amazing. Now. Does it cover full frame or is it strictly no. Super 35? So it is strictly Super 35. Okay, so you really so, are pairing it to the Super 35 sensors that yeah. you have and stuff like your your C300s, your C100s, and C500s. And, uh, and, and what we saw, you know, we see in the market is especially for our C300s and C100s that people are using the L-series lenses on those, you know. But this is a great way for them to graduate up yeah. to a new level um, without having to spend thirty thousand dollars. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, there, you guys are absolutely right. When you're coming from just the primes. Uh, and you know, mm -hmm. high-end uh, L-series still glass. Right. There's there's nothing there until you're spending a lot of money. Exactly. For those gigantic C and E zooms. Exactly. Um, and so this fits very nicely in a spot right yeah. there. So what is the pricing on this lens? So pricing on this lens is uh, it's going to be about fifty-four hundred dollars. Okay. And that's, uh, that's you know it's like MSRP right now. So I mean you know, things things can change. That's just yeah. just below basically what the standard price is, or actually just around the standard price of your your Cine Primes. Exactly. Um, but again, yeah. this is a, this is a <laughs> full one. It's a zoom. Yeah. Right. So how does it uh, how is it powered? How is the servo mechanism powered off? So of the servos of the lens are built directly into the lens. All okay. right. So you can't detach them. It's powered through the EF mount. Okay, so you now don't have is, to have any other sort of connector or anything like that. No cables, but this is important in that it's only powered through the EF mount. So whatever camera we put this lens on, it's got to get power from the EF mount. Okay. 
It's so. a very, very good point to, to make there. Exactly. It has to be able to, you can't just have a passive mount or be adapting yep. it to something. You need to make sure that you have active contents or contacts yes. that are passing power through to be able to take advantage of that. That is correct. Now, is it, uh, I assume you can, you can operate it without the servo. Can you can you manually zoom and, and, and all that or? Yeah, um, definitely. So all of the servo functions can be turned off. But one thing that's really interesting about this lens is that when you go, even with the servos engaged, when we go to rotate it, you'll feel that it feels like they disengage on themselves. It's pretty interesting. Um, it feels very nice. So, so it's very smooth. Yeah, exactly. So as a, a one-man band, if I'm running and gunning and I'm using the servo, I can grab the lens and still rotate the zoom barrel and, and you're it's not, not worried gonna, about stripping fighting. anything or fighting yeah, your motors. Yeah, I'm not motors. fighting my motor, so. Nice, yeah. very, very nice. Well, it's a beautiful lens even on the outside, just as all the <laughs> Canon lenses are. Um, and uh, it's, I mean, it seems great. Do you know when it's going to be released and available? Yeah, so we're looking at uh, you know fourth quarter here. Okay. Um, I've heard late August, Okay. maybe more september -ish. Okay, but it's but coming no, sometime this year. So. Yeah, yeah, no hard street date yet. Okay, no. perfect. Well, thank you very much for sharing that with me. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to checking this lens out. And guys, make sure to stay tuned and keep an eye on this one coming from Canon. And uh, stay tuned to the show. I've got a lot more coming from NAB 2016.